Hello, uh, this is the Human Computer Interaction Lab at the University of Maryland, and I'm Ben Schneiderman, here to introduce a videotape segment showing Don Hopkins' demonstration of the pie menu idea. This idea, which Don Hopkins developed in the late 80s, uh, was based on his recognition that long, linear, pull-down menus took a long time to select with. And therefore, he came up with the idea of arranging the menu items in a circle, as they are in this example on the screen. The cursor comes up in the center, and a, a short motion in any direction immediately selects that item uh, by use of the mouse, and a click uh, initiates the action. Don Hopkins developed the pie menu idea while working under the direction of Professor Mark Weiser here in the Department of Computer Science. Uh, then a, another student named Jack Callahan conducted an empirical study under my direction to validate the efficacy of pie menus compared to linear menus. In that study, Jack Callahan determined that the pie menus were 20% faster than the linear menus and about half the error rates. In that study, the results showed a rather consistent pattern uh, where the pie menus took selection times of approximately one second, whereas the linear menus ranged from about uh, almost two seconds to about two and a half seconds. Uh, depending on the target location, you can see that the linear menus took longer as the items were further down in the menu structure, whereas the times were essentially constant uh, for the uh, pie menu utilization. The pie menus have been implemented in the news system uh, distributed by Sun Microsystems, and they're available for selection uh, by the, those who would like to try them and use them in their daily use, as I do. Uh, the uh, demonstrations that follow are by Don Hopkins, and as he takes you through some of the interesting variations on the theme that show the promise of pie menus for even more uh, uh, beneficial applications. This is the news window system running three flag waving applications and one program to display what the mouse is doing called Mousy. Uh, when I move the mouse around, it leaves a trail, and when I click the buttons, it leaves dots. Now, these flag waving applications have pop up menus to select a flag to display. Uh, we can either select all the flags that it knows or just one of them. Now, this is a linear menu, and the Mousy shows the outline of the menu that was popped up. I'm going to pull right to a submenu and get the long list of the flags that I can display. And you see it over here, echoed. Um, when I select a flag, it updates the display. Now, down here is a pie menu. This is a two-item pie menu. And since there's only two items, each item gets half of the circle. So it's very easy to make a selection from one of them and you see it's echoed on the mousey display, um, they're both items are very close to the cursor. Now, when I go and select the lower submenu, it pops up this huge pie menu of the country names. Now, each of these labels has to be pushed out by the layout policy so that they don't overlap. And uh, while it takes up a lot of screen space. Still, each of the menu items is very close to the cursor. Now, the more items you have, the smaller a wedge each one gets. But you can still get more angular precision by moving the cursor out further and further as the wedge gets bigger and bigger. So when I spaz out here, it makes a big difference. But I can move out, and I have a lot more control. Over here, this uh, window here has a window management menu on its frame for doing things like moving the window around and resizing it. And this is a pie menu that is optimized to be really easy to use and to take advantage of muscle memory. Now, uh, what these uh, symbols here are for, I'll demonstrate. Um, this to the northeast is paint. And that simply redisplays what's in the window. And uh, 
Now to the southwest is shape, and that lets me click at two corners and resize or reshape the window. And it's giving me rubber band feedback to, as to where the window's gonna go. So I can also pop up this menu on the inside of the window. Um, now, as you can see, in this mousy window, it's just echoing all of the menu selections I'm making. Now, uh, shape and paint are two very commonly done things, so they're on the t at the top level and can be made with one selection. So, uh, if I shape it to overlap the mousy window, I can demonstrate the up and down arrows, and they change the depth of this window. This, the down will push it to the bottom of the pile of windows, and the up arrow will bring it to the top. And those are very natural, intuitive uh, directions for those functions. Uh, now, the I here is a visual pun. This turns the window into an icon, and I have the same menu on the icon for uh, consistency's sake that will turn it back into a window. Now, uh, on the submenus, there is a grab submenu for grabbing a corner of an, the window or an edge and stretching it to somewhere. Now, I can grab, say, the lower edge, and it gives me this rubber band feedback telling me where the lower edge will go when I click the button. Now, if you zoom in on this, here's the grab menu. All these uh, corners and edges here are in the natural direction, and usually when you make a selection of a corner or an edge, you're going to want to keep moving the mouse in the direction of that selection to position that edge or corner. So now this one works really well with mouse ahead that I'll demonstrate in a minute, but right now here is the move submenu for changing the position of the window. And I'll select unconstrained move to the right. That's two selections to the right, which is very easy to do. I'll clear the mousy window here using the same window manager menu and show you unconstrained move. Now, on that menu are also two constrained moves, vertically constrained, which is on the vertical axis, up, and horizontally constrained, which is on the horizontal axis to the left. And here's horizontal constrained movement. And here is vertically constrained movement. Now, the eye closes the window to an icon and lets you position that. And, of course, you get the same submenu on the icon window manager menu, just to flip the state. So these uh, menus here are very easy to use with mouse ahead. And since the window manager is something that you use a whole lot, it's really good to optimize it to use mouse ahead. Now, I'll demonstrate mousing up and down. Now, as you can see, this Pac-Man flashes on the screen really fast when I've made a selection fast enough that uh, the computer can't keep up with me. But the mousey window displays the actual menu here, although it was never mapped on the screen. It's just using a very cheap form of feedback just to give me some sort of confirmation. So I can also go reshape uh, to the southwest and then give it a new position and reshape and give it a new position. Now, that also works with submenus. Here, let me use mouse ahead to clear the uh, mousey window. And the grab submenu, I'll go grab and grab the bottom and position it. And go grab the right edge and position it. And grab the northeast corner and position that. And as you can see, um, it's very easy to make the right selection. In fact, you can go out further to get more angular precision. Uh, now, and I can demonstrate uh, closing it to an icon and positioning the icon. It's a quick gesture to the right to down and then put the icon where you want it. And just the same to open it up to a window and do that. 
So after using this for a while, it becomes very gestural and very uh, unconscious. This is a demonstration of pull-out color pie menus in Unipress Emacs under the news window system. And up here in the top window is mousey that's showing what I'm doing with the mouse. Now, if I press the middle button, it pops up the main Emacs window of commands. Uh, and I select the style submenu, and from that I select the color submenu. And it's showing these menus popping up in the mousey window above. Now. Here we have the color menu. There are four different colors that I can change in Emacs. The paper, the ink, the loud ink, and the loud paper. Now, when I move out into one of those menu slices, it selects the brightness by the distance that I've moved out. The distance is independent of the direction, so it can be used as a separate argument. Now, I'll select a bright paper color by pulling all the way out, and when I click the button, it pops up a hue bright or hue saturation submenu. Now, the hue is the direction, and the saturation is the distance that I move out. So as I move around this, it shows me the color I've selected in the menu center. So see, this is fully saturated, fully bright red, and this is some shade of pink. This is Open Windows, the X11 News Windows system, and I'm going to demonstrate font selection pie menus using the distance to select the point size. Now, uh, I click the middle button, or the right button, and up pops a menu showing the names of four different type foundries. And I can select one of those and get a submenu of fonts from that foundry. And select one of those fonts, and up pops a submenu showing the different styles of that font. Now, I move in one of the directions to select that style, and the distance that I move selects the point size of that font. So as I move in and out, the point size changes and is displayed in the menu center. So if I click when it's at 26 point, it will scale that font for me and display it to me here. This is a demonstration of the Precision Pi menu under the News Window system. It's an experiment in exaggerating the extra precision that you get with distance as you move out further from the menu center of a Pi menu. Uh, normally, the further you go from the center, the more control you have over the angle. But if you want to input an exact number like an angle, you might want to get it down to the, a certain number, but you run out of screen space before you get enough leverage to change the number to what you want. Now, what happens here is that when you poke out, it makes a flexible lever that the further out you go, the more flexible it becomes, and you have much finer control over the number. So as I move around back in and out, I'll poke it into a different place and just come out further to get a lot of leverage and dial exactly the number I want. So here's what happens when you go around to the other side. Pop. Pop. And as you get nearer, it gets less and less flexible. So what this menu is, is a scrolling, a spiral pie menu that only displays a maximum of eight items. And you can scroll to more items by spinning the cursor around the center of the menu. And this little graphic here tells you that there are more items to the left, or clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, as I spin it around, it just reveals more and 
I'm at the end. So I'll make a selection. And when I pop it up again, it remembers the position I was in last time. So we remember that Denmark is above and Canada is below. We'll just go down, down like that and make the selection very fast. 